Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. So today I have a very special guest joining with me. Her name is Ms. Hardi Kaur and she is one of my most favorite teachers during my undergraduation day. So with the help of her, today we are going to dive into the fascinating world of optometry and then we'll discuss the career opportunity in the field of academics. So let's get started for the enlightening conversation which is filled with insights, her experience, and a glimpse of her remarkable journey in the field of academia. So without any further delay, let's right jump in. Thank you, Ardit ma'am, for accepting my invitation. And just before we went ahead, can you please share your academic journey, like how you came into optometry and what academic path you selected? Yes, sure. Thank you so much, Mohanil. First of all, okay. I would like to give my heartiest congratulations to you okay. for Blinkers Thank and you, also for starting so this podcast. Okay. Because, you know, I have seen all of them recently have been doing it with a uh, few of your classmates and seniors classmates. and all of them were yes. superb. And uh, the reason or motive behind doing it was very brilliant, that I would say. And it is the need of the heart for all the students okay. pursuing optometry, right? So, yes. congratulations. And I would like to say thank you because I think I'm the first uh, teacher in your teacher. list. Teacher, yes. So that will be an honor on my side. You want to me, yeah. Thank you so much. So I would uh, start by saying I started my journey uh, from Vidyasagar College of Optometry and Vision Science in the year 2010. And then I did my internship from a great hospital that's in Delhi, that's Dr. Shroff's mm -hmm. Charity Eye Hospital. It was 2013. And then I graduated in 2014. Uh, I didn't take any breaks, got the opportunity and cracked the exam in the very esteemed party with the PBM to be University School of yeah. Optometry, our college. <laughs> our college. And in 2014 to 2016, I uh, did my post graduation and uh, did my master's degree. And was the it was like not the end of my academic career, but the beginning of it, I would say. Yes, yes. Correct. So it was a beginning of the journey. So, like, yeah. So as I would notice that you did everything on, you know, very fast pace. So before we <laughs> jump into that academic uh, wala force, like what make you choose optometry as your career opportunity? Like why? Why optometry? Because there are many other fields also. So can you please share that part also? Be very uh, honest, as I always try to be. At that point of time, uh, in 2010, back at that time, uh, there were like very handful few people who actually knew what is mm. an optometrist or what is optometry. Career is a distant thing, but the mm -hmm. word itself was very alien. So I was very fortunate to know about this. Is the reason behind this was my uncle, my Tayaji, who himself okay. is an optometrist. Okay. Dr. P. K. Singh, and he was into it uh, already. So he was the one who kind of suggested and guided so yes. at that point of time like many of the students you others and myself was one of them i just did not know much about the scope and what is the future but i knew there is something uh, which is very unique and i wanted to do something very different from my friends like something which is not like done by everybody, everybody. the other reason was uh, I always wanted to serve the community and I just knew one thing I will be in future seeing patients and I had one vision very clear that I'm going to serve the community in some way or the other that is Thank all you. that needed uh, to be done and my parents were always supported so that's how the journey began Okay, that's actually a very great point because the population which we are dealing with today, the prevalence of refractive error or treatable ocular disease is very high in our country specifically. So that, that's where we are serving a big people nowadays. Okay, so just moving forward, I just wanted to ask like if you, if you as you mentioned that you want to serve people, you might have chosen the clinical optometry part or some specialization optometry part. Why did you choose academic as your core subject and then you went ahead with that? Like why academics? Why not other things? Absolutely. Oh, very fantastic question, I would say. Yeah. Because I was very confused initially. See, it was not one decision. It was a series of events in my life that happened so simultaneously as you just correctly mentioned. Yeah. So yeah. I was getting everything from Vidya Sagar where I got the best of, uh, you know, 
uh, knowledge about mm -hmm. learning and uh, you know seeing patients then i did a fabulous uh, internship in dr shroff charity eye hospital when i really understood what are my potentials and how i can actually you know bring smile to a patient's face by giving them that best of vision mm -hmm. and it was purely clinical and i was so much focused on the clinical aspect that i was pretty sure that i want to do this this mm -hmm. is something which is going to like make me sleep better at night i was so focused and motivated after doing internship there but then what happened was there was somebody named uh, ruhi siddiqui i was uh, very fortunate to get uh, didi as my flatmate and she actually was the first person who said ardeep you should uh, pursue masters in optometry she saw something in me or maybe she just wanted my betterment in the career growth and that's why i am mentioning her and then i consulted my uh, taya ji and dad and they were all very supportive as i said and they said theek hai padhna hai pad lo yeah. so that's why the journey of masters began and as we already know every one of us would agree on this uh, like nothing better than bvp school of optometry for doing yeah. post graduation then that's right? correct i was fortunate to get opportunity there and then what i understood was i had this you know keen interest in learning so i couldn't just stop learning as i said it was the beginning of a journey monil to be very honest the more i learned and studied optometry the more i realized i don't know anything they absolutely correct and the key point to be in academics you know is i think i wanted growth and for growth i know there's just one thing that i have to keep on learning learning things yes yes so and for learning continuously i thought that uh, i have to start teaching because mm. then only i would be updated and keep on learning and there is like a lot to learn in optometry i'm still learning i think i don't know even one person of optometry till now the second point would be uh, you know the long term services as i said i was always uh, passionate about uh, serving the society and community so i think to bring some change you know uh, education is the most wonderful weapon which you can use to change the world and it is not my word it's said by nelson mandela and he said that it is how you can actually change the world it's the greatest weapon Uh, mm. so i wanted to inspire a lot of minds like i was inspired by my teachers during my bachelor's during my internship during my masters and i got i am very fortunate to get some very brilliant teachers who you know were so close to me by heart by mentoring me by like scolding me or telling me what to do what not to do constantly yes. and you know that actually made me very compassionate not just for my patients but i thought for the budding optums it's very much required yeah because i came from a place where all my friends used to ask me what is optometry what is optometry yeah and it was very difficult you know to uh, make them understand what i'm doing why i'm doing it so i thought being in this profession would help me at least other if i can tell it to like 40 students in my class 50 students in my class i think i have done my part yeah and the last and not the least or i think the best part was uh, i could get best of all the worlds yeah if i was in academics i could teach i could inspire of course i could go to camps i have done some brilliant camps for uh, blind school with parikshit gopte sir yes who's like i don't think he needs any introduction Exactly. And then uh, I could in the evening go to clinics and serve patients, yes. and I could be a researcher. Thanks to my uh, peers and thanks to uh, Amit sir, obviously who has been a driving force throughout my career since masters. Actually, hmm. he was the one. One day he called me and asked, "What do you want to do after masters?" And I really said, "If you would believe me, sir, I don't know." And he was like, "What? Yes. Why are you doing optometry? Why are you doing masters?" Then? Masters also, yeah. <laughs> yes, but then he said, "Join. I think you should join." And that's how the journey began in academics, getting everything from a single yeah. profession. That's great. That's great. 
So this one point I, you know, picked up from our conversation is as you mentioned that education is the biggest weapon. So I yes. sort of uh, remember the one of, yeah. I sort of remember one of the greatest, like from the Khan sir, like you might be knowing him, that he yes, said that leader. education, yeah, education is the biggest weapon and it is so powerful that even metal detector can't detect that the weapon is with you or not. That's so that's it's very uh, great point. Yeah, yes, like non-violent. Non that's good. That's correct, actually. Okay, so after listening to your journey, it's so actually motivating journey. So let's assume that few of the few of the undergraduate students or a fresher optometrist who wanted to pursue their career in the field of academia. So what are the new rules? What are the new regulation which they need to follow? And what are the eligibility criteria if they wanted to be a teacher? Right. So to be in academics, I think it's very simple and sorted that you have to have a master's degree in optometry. Now, uh, it depends from uh, institute to institute, what is the vacancy and requirement there. Then they will ask for some uh, specific uh, skills and also maybe some amount of experience they would need. It depends on the designation they are providing you. So okay. somewhere you start with clinical instructor, in okay. some institute you start with lecturer and somewhere uh, like I was fortunate to start with a, a designation of assistant professor. So yeah. I think this master's degree is uh, the beginning from where Great you can start. Yes. yes, that's it, that's it. Okay, okay. So master's is important, like if you wanted to go in academics and then based upon your uh, choice of institution, they have some certain rules and then uh, we have to proceed further with that. Okay, yes. okay. So as moving forward, like, what are the new skills which like uh, every optometrist should have apart from this normal academic knowledge which they have? Eventually, they will also help in their clinical work also. Like, do we have Absolutely. any some good uh, keep up tips before they, you know, beginning their journey? Uh, you know, I think what I lacked and I think we all should have had uh, in our batch and now everybody is having it already is know your scope. Okay. No, okay. what is optometry is a very nice definition and it's very yeah. well defined and uh, there by OCI. OCI. No, yeah. you scope the vision of optometry and what is the requirement. So when you know the scope and vision, you will understand where our country is lacking. Okay. And then you can fill those gaps. So when you start knowing uh, about your profession and in which areas the requirement of optimums are there, you will start seeing opportunities everywhere. There are open doors in like every aspect. Uh, so just the qualities one should be having is uh, to be a lifelong learner, hard worker yeah. and being compassionate towards your patients. And I think uh, being passionate towards what you're doing. What you are doing. I would sum up by saying that. Just do what you love. Exactly. That's, that's what the point is, is. Yeah. Yes, that's everything. That's summing up of every everything you'll get in literature, you know. Everything you just mm -hmm. click away. You just can search yeah. about the vacancies, the experience required, yeah. the salary yeah. you are providing. But something which is inside that. You cannot Google. I think that is what we need to focus on. To so understand. Yeah. So thank you for the explanation. Like what are the important points? So moving forward, like the my next question would be like the person who are already like are there in the field of academia, what more they can do apart from normal teaching and other stuffs? Like, is there anything more specialization in that point also? See, uh, as I already said, I think yeah. I myself am a learner right now. Yeah. I am yeah. uh, very fortunate to be colleagues with my teachers themselves. Yes. So I am still learning. So I am not in a position to suggest what extra you can do as a teacher. But yes, I can definitely tell what I have been doing to grow as a teacher mm -hmm. apart from teaching. See, one thing uh, that I understood as a student is, uh, I never uh, loved the subject unless and until I loved the teacher. So yeah. I think be a good human first and be compassionate, yeah. be caring. And uh, students, you know, I feel don't care how much a teacher knows until students know 
how much the teacher cares. Yes, that's very important. So I said yes. There are lots of things uh, available free of cost online, and there are lots of career options uh, uh, which you can choose by just doing some very good organized courses online. So why yes. is the need of a teacher there? So it's more of that you know human touch, that compassion, that compassion. Uh, understanding by uh, yourself or your students. And I think you have to scold when you are a teacher. That just simply reflects that you care. Exactly. So you have to be involved. You know, I think that uh, thing is very important. That human touch. The rest human of the things. Yes. That uh, you know, teaching learning process. The various uh, very you know uh, structures of uh, defined teaching, the pedagogy, and yes. all those points are available, which you can start doing. The recent methods of teaching are you know. Uh, taken from very ancient uh, history and they are repeating it and incorporating it. Uh, I would just conclude this point by saying uh, something Benjamin Franklin uh, has uh, very correctly said. So it's a mm -hmm. student that is saying that, uh, tell me and I forget, uh, teach me and I remember, but mm -hmm. if you involve me, I will learn. So I yeah. think that is something a teacher should always remember. remember. Yeah. The practical yeah. part, you know, seeing patients, observing others, seeing patients and being involved, not just, you know, the bookish knowledge and learning from books or experiences share karna, I think, bahut hai, bahut like, as a teacher. That would be the key points for budding uh, people and including myself who have to be good teachers. Yeah. So actually, we all are learning. We all are like constantly upgrading ourselves and trying to, you know, serve the community in much better way, day by day. That that's correct. So thank you for so much for sharing this important point. Like this is very, uh, yeah, this is very important. Okay. So coming moving forward, like, do you have any tips for the student who are like uh, not as much good as they have to be in terms of academia to you know in the in their under graduation days. So how do you cope up with those students? Like not everyone is going to score 100 on 100, but they might have some other skills also. Yeah, yeah, that's actually unrealistic expectation. Yeah. So how do you uh, cope up with those students also? Or any tips you might to share like on this platform? It's not about me coping up with the students. I think it's more about the students coping up with the teachers who are like very strict <laughs> and who want some deadlines yeah. to be met. And I understand that very well. But I think uh, it's not about uh, what the teacher thinks. It's more about how the student is tackling. It's never expected from anybody to be on top. Yeah. What any teacher always, you know, feels and expects is the student to understand what he is learning and apply it. That's it. Scores at the end of the day, you know, very frankly speaking, being a teacher myself does not mm. matter that much. If Absolutely. you are not applying the knowledge you are learning in the classroom. So I think few of the tips as you asked me as a mm -hmm. teacher, I can, uh, uh, you know, suggest all the students who will be listening to this is that uh, be very aware of how you're spending your time. Time management is the key. Very important. Yes. <laughs> so you have to be mindful. When you're playing, play. When you're studying, study. When you're exactly. resting, just rest. Kal exam mein kya aane wala hai? Ye soch ke aap aaj padhai nahi kar rahe ho. So that's... Hmm. Ya, kal aapka kaun sa exam kharaab gaya? Ya, kis teacher ne aapko daat lagai? Ho soch yeah. ke bhi you're wasting your time. Isn't it? Isn't so it? I think mindful is the key. And you know, have a timetable. Be present yeah. in whatever yeah. you're doing. But then when you're studying that one hour or two hours, yeah, yeah, that's yes. Yeah. And second thing is understand what you are. Now, this is specifically for optometrist students and any professional course. So yeah. it's like you have to deal with patients, as I always say in my class, you know. So you have to be very understanding uh, as an optometrist, what I am. What are my roles? 
what hmm. are the things that are supposed to do and i think this is something that we have to learn from first year be of the moment because we are clueless isn't it ki kar kya rahe hai yaar why yes bye the core subjects come in second year and then contact lens binocular vision and all those you know wonderful things that in the come in the third year Yeah. but you have to be very aware of what you are doing since your first year only and i think that is why we are not getting focused students because they don't know yeah what they are doing why they are doing so i think that is something we all should be very uh, you know aware about as a teacher we should tell it to the students as and students should be proactive Right. I think yes. this generation is so smart that they find answers to anything and everything okay. very yes. easily, right? Yes. So proactivity is very important. किसी के लिए wait मत करो कि वो आके आपको बताए. Yes. है ना? Yes. So if you want to excel in, see, not everybody is good in all the subjects. Find yeah. what you love. Be very passionate about that. Rest yeah. of the things will fall into place. I think. And the last. point is be very uh, aware while you are scrolling yes i think we all are very engaged with the phone and keep on scrolling but, and yeah. we lose track of time i think that's something all the student should it's not good student or bad student it's all about attention you know attention yes and, uh, yeah. in this entire topic i can talk about uh, you know dopamine you secretion yeah. and attention that uh, fortunately uh, amit sir actually i have put it in my mind and i started reading about it and i came to know about a lot of stuff Absolutely. so this scrolling you know is a deadly stuff that is happening to all exactly. of us yes. so be aware of social media and uh, very careful with that time you are spending scrolling and you will find a very significant change Absolutely. that's it okay so like coming to the you know summarizing what our discussion was the main key point if i want to say in one word would be discipline like you should have a proper schedule proper you know the way of reading the way of playing it should be like it should comes with a routine and the routine comes from a very good point what is discipline so even though i was lacking few of the discipline during my you know ug days but somehow we all are yeah like yeah that. But, we all have we always love to watch netflix and you always love to watch reels and those thing but we should know when to stop because that is affecting your you know concentrations by them so that is not good for your you know career and other personal life also so that is actually very good take away point from this podcast like apart from optometry and academics those things should be you know taken care of okay so this uh, we'll just conclude with the last question like what are the uh, new advancement in the field of optometry like you know like new updates or new technology which has been you know incorpor- incorporating and like how do you stay up to date because being a teacher you should constantly learn uh, like new things like which resources you follow or like how do you do that see uh, it depends which career path you have chosen Correct. in yeah. that you have to select few people who are doing very nice take yeah. them as your inspiration and just uh, listen to them i think listening to these people who have been through that experience teaches you a lot like these days what happens is mostly we love to talk because mm-hmm. there are very less people who listen but actually we should tune ourselves a bit and start listening more and more and more so like you started this beautiful podcast right yeah. because you wanted people to get some take away messages so yeah. like that there are very beautiful podcasts and then uh, there are research papers which are constantly being published in some very esteemed journals so reading is the key keep on reading what is going on in your profession like uh, i'm very interested in binocular vision so i try to read uh papers published in that field and uh, fortunately i have been uh, teaching low vision i have hmm. done some work in low vision as i already said so i keep on also updating myself from those published papers from the people around who are actually on the field doing it hmm. and that's how i learn so apart from that uh, you could as i said uh, be an independent practitioner 
you can be a person who has started his own clinic like you do you have done right uh, mm -hmm. then you could be a researcher so it depends like going to uh, some trade fairs Yeah, like you recently went on one i saw and you even got the first prize for yes. bringing out a test idea right idea. so yeah. be involved involved wherever you are be involved rather than just scrolling scroll we all do <laughs> yeah but take some time to you know listen to read so, to see what so. is going on and there are a hell lot of things i think i'm not going to name any because it depends on your interest what you want Yeah. If somebody wants to grow their business, they will have to see those points which are required to be a success successful business owner. Business, isn't it? Yeah, correct, correct. Those. And if I want to do a research, yes. Yeah. So I would see where are the gaps, what is mm -hmm. being done, and what are the lacunas. How I can fill those gaps. And as a teacher, I would be very much interested to learn the present scenario, my students' mentality, and how I can cope up. the students are not the ones who have to you know upgrade themselves definitely they have to. Okay. but i think as a educator i have that uh, responsibility to grow and uh, you know mold myself more so that i can satisfy their needs that's more important i think that's more important nay no, that is yeah. correct yes actually and uh, i remember one quote from book which is rich dad poor dad it says that why god has given you two ears and one mouth that's a normal thing <laughs> so because god wants you to listen more so that they have provided you two ears and only one mouth <laughs> to speak only whenever required <laughs> so that's a very that important is, yeah point over here and to forget but i think we can be a bit more mindful towards it and listen to people who really have been there done yeah. that and are experienced yeah. Uh, okay, ma'am. So one last question, which I would love to ask you, like, is like, how do you balance your work life thing? Like, because you have also done your speciality in academics, and you also keeping yourself up to date, reading articles, and seeing patient also. How do you maintain your personal life with that? Because nowadays it is more important to have some personal life, some mental health. We are talking about. So how do you keep and balance in the field of optometry? Like. Ah. Uh... I think I would uh, start the answer by saying that I'm a human who is coping up myself. It's like something I'm learning, and uh, the best part is in the field of optometry, I'm seeing people uh, who are really an inspiration. I would not take names because then I would be not doing justification to the other people. जिनका नाम मैं नहीं लूँगी, but I think everybody will understand. i'm seeing people who are actually full time optometrist globe trotting doing their job as an optum still running marathons still mm. spending time with their uh, children and i'm seeing some people who are so much into clinical practice publishing paper being a awesome educator and then at some age where everything is settled they're leaving their country and going to abroad and starting a new life Same. as a coach exactly you know yeah. and there are so many other examples so i think if they can do it so wonderfully if i even learn like uh, a percent of them i am successful mm -hmm. and uh, i think time management is the key which they are all doing and even i'm learning to do and that mental health thing you said na no, is mm -hmm. uh, uh, it, it depends a lot on your positive approach towards life correct so the key of this balance i would say is summing up to two things one is your mental attitude so do what you love and you will never ever find yourself to be burdened exactly uh, you know being in the present moment when i'm with my students i'm with my students when i'm with my patients i'm with my patients when i'm writing a manuscript for my researches i'm fully concentrated there when i'm listening to somebody i'm only listening and learning and of course when i'm with my parents or partner i'm just with them and the second key point is like a uh, very supportive parents i have and uh, the partner that i have chosen or any of us could choose you know the partners you choose 
uh, be it your friends, your spouse is something that is very important for your growth. Uh, you learn a lot of things from the uh, people you are surrounded with. Everybody says, right? So, choose them correctly and then you will see the difference. So, I think that is how I maintain my balance by loving what I'm doing, by being mindful and uh, I'm blessed with a very good partner. So, that's how it is. That's actually important like the partner and the family point which you mentioned because those are the people who are, we are going to discuss the thing at the end of the day. And then we should be relaxed and we should be able to share the moments which we had during Absolutely. the day. So that's a very... Stress is every, everybody's, yeah. uh, you know, part and parcel of life. Everybody is going to be stressed yeah. at yeah. some point of life. But some amount of stress is healthy. Yes. Take it in a positive way. Positive way, yeah. yeah. Because that's going to, you know, give you a little push to do more. Like the stress which you have, the healthy stress which I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. So I feel that the examples which you gave previously, that the marathon running and the life coach, we already know those uh, big optometrists, and like they are, uh, even they are inspiration for me also. Like how beautifully they are managing all the things and doing the the main full time optometry job also. So that's the very good example which you have given to us. Okay, so I feel that we have came to the conclusion, like the end of our podcast. So I'll just say a big thank you for coming here and just being my, you know, best guest as of now. So thank you very much for coming. Yeah. So big, big pleasure seeing all of you and, you know, all of you have been my students like yeah. so far and yeah. you yourself being an inspiration to many others by starting your clinic and yeah. you're starting a new uh, coach coaching in the morning that you're posting about yeah, yeah. and then this podcast you've been yeah. a good student so i think uh, you should conclude not me you should conclude the entire session by giving some key points to all the okay. listeners okay the mic has shifted to this side to this end <laughs> okay so what i can think of is like uh, basically as you mentioned that uh, we should have a proper discipline which I feel I was lacking during my UG, UG days and the previous time. But nowadays, I'm trying to learn more habits and trying to maintain those habits. Like consistency is the key. For first year, second day, we all do, we all go to gym and we all start new things. But we cannot uh, take forward that point. So reading the books is again a good habit. So we can also start that. And second is to have a proper schedule. Like you can have a specific time of watching Instagram reel. Like which I am implying myself nowadays. Like I have read one book which is name is Do Epic Shit from Ankur Varegu. And he himself says that you should have one hour of your day to just chill. Like you watch Instagram, you watch YouTube funny videos. But you have to make sure that after that specific time, you avoid those things. Like when you are working, when you are you know, with your families or something, you should not watch those reels and those, you know, entertainment stuff, short time entertainment stuff. So definitely that's a very important all about the dopamine situation. Dopamine yes. situation. And eventually, like if you if you change the uh, con content after every 30 seconds, your focus ability is gone. Like if I Absolutely. have to ask that, imagine your life after five years, they can't even imagine because their attention spasm is so low. So I feel that reading a book can definitely increase your attention spasm. Like you can actually imagine the story which you are reading. And along with that, you would be able to imagine your own life. Like if I am the hero of my book, I would be able to imagine that after five years, I should have these multiple stores, this speciality and this point. So having a good imagination is very important. So this is how I would like to conclude and give a few tips to my junior optometrist, even though I am a junior itself now. <laughs> we all are. We all are, yeah. So learning is a lifelong process. Okay, so... And again, one more last point, which I wanted to, you know, highlight now is you should respect your teachers because they are the one who has sacrificed their, you know, some of the time and they are coming and lecturing you. That's the most important point they are like doing for you. So always respect your teacher and, you know, just maintain the decorum of the classroom, obey the rules. And those uh, basic stuffs are really important because at the end, like they are going to, you know, give some rewards. So if I remember during my UG days, those discipline, those timing, they need to follow that if the class starts by 10 o'clock, you should be in class by 9.55. <laughs> that was our main favorite teacher, which I, I can remember right now. So those are the, you know, small steps that leads to a good human being. 
and then being a good human being you would be able to be a good optometrist so that's a very you know simpler and important point of uh, time management also is that okay ma'am <laughs> yes perfect i think you have concluded it pretty well yeah <laughs> okay okay so ma'am just uh, once again i would like to say a big thank you for you know coming to thank giving you your time and sharing your so much. yes yes so if some of the students who are like outside of our institute wanted to you know connect with you regarding any uh, doubts related to optometry or academic life so it would be great that you can uh, share your email id with us so that we can Definitely. connect with you for sure Okay, yes. so I'll, like uh, teaching you know, is a lifestyle, so I have to yes. keep on doing it. I know yes. I have yes. learned from yes. my awesome seniors, so they are always yes. available for me. Exactly. Thank you so much, Monal. Thank you, thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much.